The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented Jesus saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. When Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The words of John the Baptist describing the coming of the Messiah are words that we heard less than a month ago during Advent. John serving faithfully as a prophet of God, as a messenger to the people. He's been calling people to repentance in preparation for the coming Messiah, calling on them to turn back once again to their God. The response to John's message has been evidenced by those who are lining up all along the Jordan. John inviting them to receive the baptism he has to offer, a washing with water for forgiveness from their sin. John is not the Messiah. John makes it very clear to us all throughout his ministry that he is not the Messiah. John is God's messenger, pointing beyond himself to the one who is to come after him, the one whose sandals he confesses he is not fit to untie. Now, John is not the Messiah, but he is the one that God has called to baptize the people in their preparation for the Messiah's coming. And unknown to everyone there at the Jordan, within the ranks of all the people that John will baptize, Jesus waits his turn to be washed in the river. Without incident or fanfare, Jesus comes to be baptized with all the other folks gathered to listen to John preach about repentance and take part in this ritual cleansing. Jesus is one of the countless others who have traveled to the Jordan. He stands anonymously on the riverbank and he joins in with the women and men who line up to enter the water and be baptized. And John, a few lines before our reading starts, he he just finishes saying, I am not fit to carry the sandals of the one who is coming. It's something that John has always said, something he will keep saying every time he does this so that there's no confusion as to who he is and why he was there. That he just finishes that statement and who shows up, sandals and all, to be baptized. Of course, John hesitates. I need you to baptize me. Now, the gospel doesn't tell us how John knew that Jesus was the one. I suppose we could imagine Jesus surrounded by one of those old Renaissance paintings with the heavenly glow around his head, a glow that maybe only John could see. But somehow, I feel that that wouldn't be true to the purpose of why Jesus was bothering to be baptized at all. I don't think John needed a secret heavenly light that was broadcasted as a signal for his eyes only. John had been living his whole life preparing others and himself for this very moment. And so naturally, even as ordinary as it all appeared, by God's grace, by the Spirit's power, John recognized that the time had come. It had to come eventually, right? Well, ever true to his mission, though, John resists. If what he has been saying all along is the real deal, well then, how could he baptize Jesus? Jesus should baptize him. And in addition to humility, well, maybe even for John, there's a sense of relief. He's ready to hand it over, to give the responsibility to the one for whom it was meant all along. 
And what is Jesus' response? Jesus says, let it be so now. You're the one pointing to me, John, preparing the way. You have done everything God has asked. This is it. We are fulfilling this mission now. Baptize one more time. But Jesus was focused on John's relationship with God, and Jesus was focused on his own relationship with God. And he's telling John, it's what God wants. Let's do this. Whether John wanted to keep arguing or not, whether he felt worthy or not, he did it. John consented. And Jesus was baptized. And just as Jesus came up from the water with John's mission now complete, the Holy Spirit showed up and God claimed Jesus as the Son, the Beloved, the one in whom God is pleased. And Jesus' mission now begins. An unknown to everyone there, here finally stands the one who is the fulfillment of God's will. Jesus, the Son, the Beloved, with nothing to repent, with no need of forgiveness, Jesus is baptized. Jesus particip participates in and is obedient to the will of God. God acknowledges God's pleasure in Jesus. Jesus, our brother here among us, God with us, the son of Mary and Joseph, given a name that means he will save his people from their sin. Yes, John's mission is complete. The one whose coming John was sent to announce, the one whose way John was sent to prepare, the Messiah stands at last side by side in the water with the same people he's come to save. Jesus, born into vulnerability in a dangerous world, God with us. And Jesus baptized, soaking wet in a murky river, God with us. Jesus, our brother, lived and walked among us as one of us, sharing in the most basic of human ways and human needs, God with us all the way unto death. Jesus, our risen Savior, Christ, the Lord, lives and walks with us still. In the power of the Holy Spirit, in our own baptisms, God with us beyond death. Jesus' baptism is radical. It's world-changing. It's order-shifting. It's a turning point. Jesus' birth, Jesus' baptism, Jesus' death, Jesus' resurrection, all of that is connected to, by grace to you and me. All of it rests there as we confess by our faith in taking part in the sacrament of baptism. It all rests right there in that font, that plain little bowl of water. Funny how we take something that is everything, though, and make it smaller, make it more manageable. So Christmas is a manger and a donkey. It's starlight and angelic bat lullabies. And baptism is water and a candle and sponsors and special outfits. And Good Friday is a trial and a conviction, a hammer and some nails. And Easter is a garden, an empty tomb, trumpets and lilies. The finite holds the infinite. And that's okay. I mean, as we heard... Before, in John's Gospel last week, the Word became flesh, and that is what the Incarnation is after all. The infinite God meets us right where we are and as we are. We are finite, at least within our own limited understanding and experience. But then, well, because of that, we're prone to forget. We lose sight of Jesus, the Messiah, who's in the midst of the crowds on the banks of the Jordan. He just starts to blend in. And we forget to remember that this one who is like everyone is also like no one ever. We need God's nearness and God's accessibility, but sometimes we receive it by losing sight of the incredible wonder, the, the boundless love, the limitless grace of Jesus. A radical, world-changing, order-shifting turning point. Jesus' baptism and your baptism 
and mine too. Anybody out there know the day they were baptized, the date of their baptism date? You can raise your hand if you do, anybody? A few of you, yeah, okay. Well, we encourage our baptismal families to highlight, to celebrate that special day in the life of their children. Well, in all of their lives, really. But I think that gesture can seem like a token. It's just another thing to do. It's a suggestion. It's something we might do if we remember. I was baptized on October 25th, 1970. It happened to be Reformation Sunday that day. And I confess, with all the hubbub that happens here at Gloria Day and just in our Lutheran world in general around that time of year, well, that day, even when it isn't a Sunday, can pass me by. It can be almost November before I remember that I forgot. Another day that gets lost in the crowd of so many seemingly ordinary days in life. A few years back, the worship team took on the effort to help all of us at Gloria Day remember our baptisms, reminding those uh, who had records for the baptismal date to um, look them up, or if they needed us to share that date with them, we would, encouraging to find out that date from family or other records if they already didn't know, and inviting people to, to bring in pictures that we would place on a bulletin board dedicated to displaying photos of, of baptisms, whether you were in a picture because you were someone's sponsor or pictures of your own baptism. So when that happened, I went on the hunt for my own. I knew there were no pictures of my baptism, but I figured there had to be some kind of record of it somewhere. And um, what I found was, well, I found my baptismal certificate. Amazingly, it's not as yellow as I would have thought it would be. Um, and it's uh, stamped with the seal from the Lutheran Church in America, LCA, our predecessor bodies. One of our predecessors, and I have my little, my little cloth that they wiped my little head with. And then I found, well, this was the bulletin from that day. Right? And, and things don't change much. I mean, they're good things that we continue to do as a church. We acknowledge the baptism of our members. And so it says, daughter of Mrs. And Mr. and Mrs. Gary Wolberding is brought into the fellowship of Hope Lutheran Church and God's kingdom through the sacrament of holy baptism. And we pray for God's continual blessings upon Patricia and her family. And they list my sponsors, my uncle, my aunt, a good friend of my dad. So, but then, then I found this. And this was the kicker. I mean, this is what really caps it off. This was a bulletin from Trinity Lutheran in Chicago. On the west side, in the old Austin neighborhood where my father grew up, where my grandmother and grandfather went to church. And it said on that day, the flowers in the sanctuary were given by Jean Volberdank in honor of her niece, Patricia, who was received into Christ's family through baptism today in Indiana. Who's this kid? Who is this kid? She's nothing. She's just some other little baby, but two congregations were celebrating that event of baptism. Who are any of us? Who are we? We are children of God, beloved children of God, and that is something to celebrate. That day in my life, whatever day that day is in your life, is a turning point that's worthy of remembering, that's worthy of celebrating, that's worthy of rejoicing. And by God's love and grace, because of Jesus at the Jordan saying to John, let it be so now, Jesus entered into the baptismal water with us and he made it so that we can reemerge each day as he did up out of that water to see the heaven open to us, to have the Holy Spirit come to us, to hear God call us daughter or son, God's beloved with whom God is pleased. Now like John, you and I, we are not the Messiah. But by what the Messiah has done for us, 
We who are unfit to tie his sandals are nonetheless called to let it be so now, today, to serve Jesus, our Messiah, to proclaim him and to point others to his saving love and grace. God's beloved, live each day in your baptism. Live as God's daughters, live as God's sons, and remember that world-changing, order-shifting, turning point of a day. You are changed people, and changed people do change the world. Amen.